The rocket barrage, fired from both tank and battle mech, smashed down where the Jir Falcon had briefly stood. Sending out great geysers of grayish dirt from the walls, berm, backslope, and slabs of cement flying from its top. He shot back with the ultra auto cannon in his mech's arms. His Jir Falcon bled heat beautifully. He could run and jump and shoot all day long as he was judicious in firing his two large extended range lasers, also arm mounted. As he soared over the enemy mech, he kicked the cockpit at the front of its fuselage. It was built more like an aircraft with arms and legs than a human. In years past, the clans had generally disdained physical mech combat. That was beginning to change. Though some still adhered to the unwritten code against physical attacks, Alex was not one of them. Battle Report, Allison City, Porima, Lyran Commonwealth, April 3rd, 3134. If you've at all followed Battletech history from the Dark Age and into the Ill Clan era, it's impossible to deny that Clan Jade Falcon really went all in on the concept of totem mechs. These battle mechs, more and more common following Operation Revival, were sometimes purely aesthetic, but increasingly functional as new technologies like partial wings were implemented. In the case of the Jira Falcon, the JF 18814A, a 55 ton battle mech introduced by the Jade Falcons in 3112, would definitely put its bird-like features to work. The production lines on Sudeten were quickly ramped up to produce as many Jir Falcons as possible once warriors saw the initial production units in action. The Jir Falcon was conceptualized as a new battle mech that could inspire the Jade Falcons that piloted it and fought next to it. As humanity entered the 32nd century, the clan was facing an identity crisis after so many years of frustration and failed initiatives intending to help them gain ground in this complex and perilous political and military reality of the Inner Sphere. The Jir Falcon was intended to remind Jade Falcons of what they were and the power that they could bring to bear against those who threatened the clan or got in their way. By all accounts, it was a successful venture thanks to solid design and notable personalities that embraced the mech and lifted the clan to new victories. The most notable of the Falcon mech warriors to take on the Jir Falcon was Alexander Hazen. Born in 3103, he would end up being most often remembered as the Sibkin, close confidant, and lover of Malvina Hazen, but he was a successful and savvy battlefield commander in his own right. Alex understood the symbolic value of battle mechs like the Jir Falcon, and embraced one as his personal mech, even though the other Rai stars were quick to seek out more powerful and heavier designs. On the left shoulder of his Jir Falcon, he painted a white lily gripped in a steel gauntleted fist, which was his personal insignia. From then on, he also referred to the mech as his White Lily. During the assault on Allison City on Parima in the Lyran Commonwealth in April of 3134, Alex piloted White Lily through a system of stormwater culverts to avoid enemy fire. Closing in on the city walls, he used the Jir Falcon's jump jets and partial wing to leap over the defenses and bring fire and fury to the Lyran defenders. As the Falcons and Lyrans clashed, Hazen eagerly challenged a 75-ton Ryokin II piloted by Lieutenant Colonel Rain von Kleist of the 8th Lyran Guards. After a brief bout, Alex was able to disable Kleist's mech and put an end to the city's defense without taking serious damage to the White Lily. Constructed around an Olivetti weaponry Stage 3 steel core chassis and a 275 Fusion XL engine, the 55-ton Jir Falcon can hit a top speed of 86 km per hour and hold up under the strains and stresses of aggressive use. The mask system added to the left torso can briefly boost that top speed to 10 MP or 107.5 km per hour. With the clan's standard Type A1 jump jets and a prominent partial wing, there will be plenty of stresses on the mech's frame. For many centuries, physical combat between battle mechs was seen as distasteful and even dishonorable. By the 32nd century, this outlook had radically changed among the Jade Falcons, who saw its value. Physical combat fit with the much more aggressive philosophy of the Falcons, who wanted to not just defeat their opponents, but do so quickly and decisively. Lighter mechs that could move quickly, leap great distances, and even carry out death from above attacks with clawed feet and arms became much sought after designs among the Falcon Tumen. The Jir Falcon's jump jets and partial wing help it to leap out to up to 150 meters to rain down fire and destruction on its enemies. If it's been a while, or you just haven't yet seen the rule for the partial wing, it adds an additional 2 to the jump MP and siphons off 3 heat from whatever you generated that turn, 
so long as you're operating in a standard atmosphere. It was first created in 3067 by the Jade Falcons to improve mobility, though it shouldn't be confused with a LAM system, as it really is much more of a gliding mechanism than anything that would generate genuine lift. The weight of the partial wing depends upon the weight of the mech. It's 5% of the mech's weight for clan mechs and 7% for inner sphere designs, rounded up to the nearest half ton. For both inner sphere and clan mechs, the partial wing takes up three internal critical slots on each of the side torsos. The Jair Falcon was given nine tons of Radiant Advanced Series reflective armor plating, which puts it on par with the Bushwhacker, ahead of the Wraith, but behind the bulky Wolverine as far as armored protection goes on the raw point scale. However, the reflective properties of the armor cut down the effectiveness of energy weapons that can chase the Jair Falcon down. As with everything, there's an opportunity cost, and what the Jair Falcon lacks in armor it makes up with speed and mobility. Just keep an eye out to avoid attacks from missiles and ballistic weaponry. With the Raptor XT Type 3 communication system, Goshawk E-Series targeting and tracking system, and a light active probe, the Jir Falcon can easily take on the role of command mech, which is reflected in its use by Alexander Hazen and Benj Malthus. With the standard gyro and cockpit, the Jir Falcon was left with 20 tons of space for weaponry. The Falcon designers clearly wanted to make the mech deadly at all ranges when they added the Series 6B ER Large Laser to each arm. The tried and true consistent damage is something that was appreciated by warriors who needed their equipment to be there for them in the moment of life or death. It has the range and consistent damage potential to perform well. The more controversial choice was the addition of two LB-2X autocannons, another reliable weapon that has been around and employed since Operation Klondike the Clan LB-2X has incredible range and can be very effective at pelting already damaged targets. However, the weight invested in each autocannon, along with the ton of ammunition it has, is a big price for a couple of points of damage each turn. The 12 tons of weaponry for a possible 4 damage per turn does ruffle a few feathers when they check out the Jir Falcon. Still, reports from the battlefield were favorable. It's possible that there was some bias involved in the total mech with an emotional component, but ultimately, the winners of the battles told the tales. When the second Falcon Dragoons arrived to challenge the Hell's Horses on a chateau in 3113, they weren't just interested in a fight. Though I understand beating up on Hell's Horses is quite enjoyable. The Falcons intended to put their Jir Falcons to the test against the Hell's Horses 65-ton Balius totem mechs, and specifically called out a star of them in the Bachal. Setting up a star of 2nd Falcon Dragoon Jir Falcons on a hill within the trial area, the Falcons immediately began to use their long-range weapons against the quad-legged Balius. The horses did return fire with their own ER large lasers, but the Jade Falcons used their mech's agility to remain difficult targets. Eventually closing in on the Falcons, the Hell's Horses mech warriors believed they would have an edge against these long-range specialized mechs, but that's when the Jir Falcons leapt forward. Utilizing their partial wings, jump jets, and brazen desire to win at any cost, the Falcons performed two successful death from above attacks on the charging Hell's Horses mechs. The battle ended shortly after when the horses requested Hegira. Instead of claiming the remaining Balius as a Sorla, the Falcons crushed and obliterated the mechs in front of the surviving Hell's Horses warriors. The 11 double heat sinks on the Jir Falcon are adequate but jumping will add that additional three cooling to make the mech near neutral. Unless you're really pushing things turn after turn, the heat isn't going to be a problem for the mech. My verdict on the Jir Falcon's primary configuration is mixed. I love the mobility and the look of the mech, being a Jade Falcon and all, but the 12 tons of weight dedicated to the LB-2Xs really bothers me. The mech obviously can reach out and pelt targets at a distance beyond other weapons, but when it's just two damage per shot, what is the point? The active probe, the mask, the partial wing technologies are all great. However, they would be much better served if the mech had more than just two ER large lasers to send pain downfield. Now, the Jir Falcon did see some variants, which is good. One common theme across these variants is a replacement of that reflective armor with a slightly lighter ferrofibrous armor which provides more general coverage rather than focusing on just reducing the effectiveness of energy weapons. In a few cases, it also buys some extra space. The Jir Falcon 2 is the second official version of the mech, and it's worth noting that it was released the same year as the original. As mentioned a moment ago, it employs that ferrofibrous armor, but the overall armor point coverage is the same as the original. 
The light active probe is sacrificed in favor of adding two laser heat sinks, bringing the total cooling to 29 per turn with that partial wing. The Gear Falcon 2 is a very minor tweak overall, and since the weapon's loadout remains the same, it really does feel like a showcase for those laser heat sinks rather than anything specifically to improve the Mech Warrior's quality of life. I'm not super impressed by this one. The Gear Falcon 3 does play with the weapon's loadout, has installed a compact cockpit, and has a few tweaked internal parts. Also produced in 3112, it's like the Falcons couldn't quite decide on what this mech should be. Both the LB-2Xs were pulled in favor of Ultra AC-2s, which does double the possible damage per turn but at the cost of ammo consumption, and the opportunity to jam those autocannons in the process. Those shots, along with the ER large lasers, are aided by a targeting computer wedged into the right torso. There's no light active probe and just 10 laser heat sinks on this one, so you need to watch your fire with those large ER lasers. The Gear Falcon 3 was also the mech that Benj Malthus used, so if you're playing a scenario and want to be super accurate, this one is your gem. Next up is the Gear Falcon 4, and it features the heretical inclusion of Intersphere technology in the form of two TS EMP cannons replacing the LB2Xs. Remember that these are the cannons which fire an electronic burst of radiation that's intended to disrupt or even shut down the systems of battle mechs or other large vehicles. Once again, there's no light active probe, but there are three additional laser heat sinks installed. With a battle value north of 3,700, this is an extremely expensive gamble for those TS EMP cannons shutting down multiple targets during a battle. This is one of those battle mechs that doesn't seem worth the effort, but in the context of Battletech history, with the Jade Falcons that are directly responding to the threat of the Republic of the Sphere, it actually makes a lot of sense. Remember, the Republic are the ones who are fielding those super heavy battle mechs. Shutting one of those massive mechs down would completely change the outcome of a battle. It's a specialized use mech for sure, but worth considering if you know your opponent is going to run some of those 100 plus ton mechs against you. Imagine the salt that would be shed if you shut down their super heavy mech on a crucial turn. The Gear Falcon 5 was Alexander Hazen's personal 3133 refit of the mech. It kept the ER large lasers but replaced the LB2Xs with an Ultra AC5 in each arm and just a single ton of shared ammunition in the center torso. Much deadlier than the other variants, this mech trades for it by cutting how long it would remain battlefield effective. The 20 shots of UAC-5 ammunition can quickly evaporate, and the mech's 10 double heat sinks are inadequate to handle the sustained ER large laser use. It was a bold variant for a bold mech warrior. Of course, it didn't quite work out for old Alex in the Battle of Sky, but that's a story for another video. As is the norm, we do need a mech frog variant, so I tackled the job with all the energy and enthusiasm that a burnt out middle-aged teacher could muster. Based on the Gear Falcon 3, it retains the small cockpit and the converted ferrofibrous armor. After pulling the autocannons, I bumped up the armor to 9.5 tons and allocated it evenly. Returning to standard double heat sinks, the MF Gear Falcon has 14 to deal with a rather toasty loadout. Retaining the spirit of the design, I kept the ER large lasers but swapped the autocannons for a pair of advanced tactical missile 6 launchers located in the left and right torsos. With just one ton of ammunition of each type, you'll have to make them last. Now I think this variant would be complementary to the others by adding additional punch in the mid and short range. Beyond the reinforced legs and the eagerness to launch themselves at any opponents who wander near, enemies of the Gear Falcon would have to consider the implications of waves of high explosive missiles as well. If you do want to try out the Gear Falcon MF, I've included the record sheet in the video notes. Please let me know how it goes. Overall, I think the Gear Falcon has a lot of things going for it as part of the pantheon of clan Dark Age mechs. Unfortunately, not all can be roses and sunshine as those LB2Xs really feel like a lost opportunity and none of the official variants seem to address it. Heck, I would even be open to a heavy laser version just for a change of pace. It has the look, it has the speed and maneuverability, it's just missing that third heat to make this into a solid trivection oven scenario. I know it's not perfect, but I still like it. But then again, I am a more than a little biased. What do you think? Now this isn't going to be our last Dark Age mech. Many of them deserve some love. Big thanks for coming by today to talk about the Jira Falcon. If you think it was worth your while, don't forget to hit all the buttons and make the YouTube algorithm happy. 
Going that extra step to become a channel member directly helps the channel and makes sure this little experiment in nonsense can continue. Until we meet again, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.